Okay, here we are. Welcome to the Namaste Village Experience. So glad you're all here today to join us and experience the light of our unified mind. Sometimes we come in here separated and, and scattered all over the place, but this joining brings us together in the light. It's an experiential association. So we'll begin right now with a centering prayer. So everyone take a deep breath. Let all the thoughts go that you brought into the room and open the mind simply to the light that we all ask for in unison. We ask for this help and it is given us because we know our Father loves us. Our Creator is beneficent and bless, blessing to every one of us and would give us this light by which to see our way home to heaven. We have no reason but for joy this day, for our way is opening at last, this very moment. So thank you, Father, for this blessing and the miracles which light our way to you. Amen. Okay. Can you hear again on the speakers? Okay. I think Chris is uh, working up. Now we do. It just has to get closer to you. It has to get closer. Okay. All right. So um, good morning, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> I've been thinking about how the the goal that we're going to accomplish is purely supported by the light and the truth that the Holy Spirit gives simply for the asking. And the interesting thing about this communication is it's not just a concept or uh, perhaps even a, a healing act that occurs between between us as, as uh, the sons of God and the daughters of God. But it's also a light that shines away and loosens the chains of our being limited to a body, limited in thought. The light literally frees us up. And we give this to each other. It, there's an interesting way that the it's expressed in any spiritual tradition that as I share the light from my mind to yours, then you share it back to me. And the truth that I extend to you, you extend it back to me. And we're healed together as one, not one of us healing another, but we're healed together through the access we make to the Holy Spirit that universal mind, the super consciousness that we share. It's a beautiful experience. And that's why we show up every morning, not because we have the most eloquent teacher in the world and when it, that shows up in any particular moment, or it's, it's the, all of us together. And I, I like Bernie Sanders gave this definition of God when somebody asked him, well, who's God? What is God to you? And Bernie said that God is all of us together. And that's exactly what it is. It's not some sort of thing outside of ourselves. It's, it's literally us unified in a much broader constellation of identity than we could ever hope for in just finding God and finding awakening in this limited configuration we call a human being. The light literally shines away the sense of being human, the sense of uh, being sick. There's no, there's no miracle, there's no gift that God cannot give us if we ask for it. And that has, that's, at first we take that on kind of a blind faith that, uh, well, I have nothing else to believe in it. I'll, I'll just try to have faith in God. But God promises that the faith that you ex express to him and extend to your brother as well. It's the same thing, by the way. Your faith in your brother is your faith in God. Sometimes we think, well, my brother's going to screw me again if I, if I open up too much to him. But the transformation is literally 
that you can trust your brother exactly as much as you trust God. And sometimes we feel, well, I, I don't, I, I trust God, but he does all these things to me that I don't like. Well, do you really trust God in the same way that you trust your brother? It's the same idea. The person sitting next to you is equally because he was or she was created by God. And so they're exactly the same as trusting God. So th that's our great lesson that we have to learn. And can we learn to trust the brother who has uh, cheated us on that card? Us on that card? Uh, took a, a bigger fee than we desired when we did a stock transaction or whatever he did, or charged too much at the store for a, a product that we bought. We're always feeling like, oh, I'm about to be cheated. <laughs> and and that's a, a sense of uh, lack, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And there's no reason for that. We, we project a world based on how we feel about ourselves inside. And if we feel lack, we'll, ex we'll experience episodes of our brother treating us to verify that belief. Mm -hmm. So the awakening is a conscious shift in our mind to experience our brothers in a new way and ask the Holy Spirit to show us who our brother truly is and not just say, well, based on my past, this is not going to turn out well. No, we're going to base our, our new awakened vision on the Holy Spirit's view of our brother who sees him perfectly and loving and joyous as he truly is. That's the awakening. That's the transformation of our mind. It's, it, it can seemingly, the body might lag a little bit in this awakening. That's, well, just the body's not real. We're, that's part of what the light of the Holy Spirit or God, that his gift to us shows us that we're not a body. And we're loosening those chains that bind us to this world. And so what this, this is a learning experience, isn't it? It's, it's an experience of uh, growing up as a human being and learning those tough lessons of sticking your hand on the stove and you get burned and coming into a different kind of lesson that the fear that we use to govern our lives growing up can now be transferred into love. And a, a, instead of uh, always being in a position where we think we're going to lose something, to discover that we're going to be given everything. And to learn these new lessons, it's, it's more of an undoing, as maybe if you look, read The Course of Miracles, it's called an undoing of the way we grew up spent 20 or 30 years learning how to be, we have to, all that needs to be undone. And to, to learn that, you need to be a happy learner. Just like a little kid. Yes. A happy learner. And sometimes when we get older, we think, well, I know everything and I know enough to get by in this world and nobody can teach me anything. But Jesus would have us be, and that's in this particular sense, a happy learner, just like a little kid. Like uh, Darla and I, before COVID, were uh, volunteering at an elementary school helping kids uh, learn to read or whatever they needed doing. And, uh, and Darla's particular assignment, you know, the kids that are there that need help are usually from broken families or the parents are drug addicts or... Maybe they just play video games all day long and they ignore their kids. Yeah. It, there's a lot of things going on that a, a kid doesn't do well then in school. And it's a lot like us when we get older. We think our father in heaven has abandoned us and we have yeah. a bad life. And the little kids are suffering that same experience from their parents. But if you show them love, and Darla found this in the particular classroom situation she was able to be in of they're, they're very quick to learn meditation. Mm -hmm. They immediately, into, no matter how bad their home life is, how little love they receive and how poorly they do in school, 
if you give them the opportunity to learn something true, like meditation, they love it. Kids love to learn. And that same love of learning and happiness to learn is what we need to have to discover our true self. Now that we're more independent and free of our parents, we still have to learn what it is to discover our heavenly father, who is also our parent. And that, and that feeling that all of us have in this world of separation and uh, disease and war and lack, that God has truly not abandoned us. And we need to be happy to learn that this is so through miracles. When you release the guilt of this world, you can discover that you'll be shown, you no longer have to have blind faith, but you will be given the evidence that your faith is true. So that's our message for today. And we have every reason to be happy to be joined in accessing this universal light of truth that shines this world away. It's a product of our, our unified desire on Zoom and here in this room that we're going to do this together. And when one falls short for a day, his brothers shine the light into his mind and, and sisters shine the light and they lift themselves up. We had a good experience of that yesterday in the Course of Miracles meeting that we have at one o'clock here, that you can walk into the room feeling like, yuck, and you, <laughs> and you walk out because of the unified mind, oh my God, my joy is back. It's that simple. We join together in truth and the light of the Holy Spirit shines that truth into our minds as an experience of light. What is the light? Join your brothers in the worship of God and you'll discover what that is. So thanks everyone. We'll turn it over to Darla. I'm sure she has a few words to say. Thank you, beloved Alden. Thank you. You're always inspiring, my love, full of spirit, right? Inspiring. <laughs> In spirit. Uh, first thing that's on my mind from what Alden just closed with is I want to thank Chris for the part when we joined together in that ACIM uh, gathering. It's really just a sharing. He has, he brings up, is there anything to lay on the altar? And like someone did come in quite upset yesterday and needed help. And uh, so that's able to be laid on the altar right away. And nothing even really needs to be said. If someone's guided, they say something, but it's more like just the light, you know, we, it's like you see as a whole mind, you see the truth, you see the light in that person. So, you know, that's just a momentary thing. That's just a little dark dream for a second and just a little disruption. And so you really just, our minds just shine the light on that. And how can it have the energy anymore? It can't, it can't, it disappears in the light. You know, so, uh, so the healing is very quick, you know, just by releasing and it's releasing even just stating something, isn't it? Just even saying, this is my disturbance right now. You're vulnerable. You're asking for help. And uh, and so the release begins immediately. So uh, Alden was speaking about decisions we make. He told me he was going to speak about decisions. I don't know <laughs> if he ever said the word. Uh, so it brought to my mind uh, that we make a decision, don't we, for love. And that immediately reestablishes peace, doesn't it? And then love simply comes of itself. You know, it's already there, isn't it? And he also touched on the idea, you know, sometimes we think God causes this or that. And I guess we, we all do that as, as in the, when we're in the human condition. And uh, I just, I find it really helpful to remember that we have free will. God, God loves us so much. He gave us free will. We're not robots, right? We're not on an automatic pilot here controlled like puppets or something. And we have free will. And so we dream whatever we choose to dream. God's always there to the rescue and trillions of heavenly hosts. There's so many helpers, so many more than we give ourselves credit for or give heaven credit for. Yeah, I mean, we got them all over the place. We need them. And so we have them. You know, desperately, we need them. We have guardian angels. We have so, there's so many orders, even of angels and midwayers and, you know, that help us. Um, we just have to simply be willing to ask, right? And that uh, the fear can disappear and the, the problem can just pass. Uh, and the idea 
of sacrifice, which we spoke of yesterday as a lack and uh, just our perception of lack. Um, yeah, it's uh, nowhere. <laughs> it's nowhere and love is everywhere, isn't it? That idea of lack is just a dark dream is not in a way. It's uh, just like when you wake up from a nighttime dream, right? And you realize that really was nothing. <laughs> you know, you remember, oh gosh, okay, I'm here now. You know, that uh, that was just a little dark, dark thought for a moment. It's that simple, nothing to feel guilty about. That's the same with the idea of sacrifice, right? And lack, we just let go of that. Okay, that wasn't real. I just thought I was a body for a moment. Um, yeah, so the idea of love returning of itself, when we make a decision for love, I'll just quickly um, uh, talk about what happened in the First World War, because I just happened to come across it today. That little story that probably everyone here knows is, is either 1912 or 1914, where uh, First World War, and there were the British and the Germans in the foxholes, like they called it something different, trenches, right? In the trenches, Christmas Eve, everyone probably knows that story. And uh, so I was just reminded of that today where uh, Christmas Eve, there has been raining, they're cold and uh, really close to each other. Like they said when they weren't firing, they could hear each other cooking. They, uh -huh. you know, they could hear the pans and everything. And uh, all of a sudden, a German guy starts singing in German, Silent Night. So that'll be our song tonight, today that we'll all share because it's just uh, so beautiful and it'll it'll remind us to bless all those souls. Um, so he just starts singing Silent Night and then a guy that's job, a British guy who was closer to them um, was listening and enjoying that and going, whoa, that's Silent Night in German. And then he started singing a different song and it, you know the story, pretty soon they're back and forth and, and then some start crawling out. And uh, hold this for a second, if you would. Uh, there's just a quick little part of that that I want to share with you um, where uh, uh, they say that um, just this little part, pulled by a force stronger than fear. Isn't that beautiful? Pulled by a force at one point stronger than fear, one by one the soldiers started laying down their arms, creeping beneath barbed wire and around mor mortar holes into no man's land. At first it was just a few men, then more and more until scores of British and German troops met together in the first light of Christmas day. The boys brought out photos of their moms and wives and exchanged gifts of candy and cigarettes. Someone produced a soccer ball and the men played a few yards away. So this all happened Christmas morning and then the soldier's truce was over. It was just a moment though. It was a moment, a holy instant where how did it start? They were pulled by a force stronger than fear. They were pulled by love. They found commonality, right? They found that they are one. As Alden started, that we're all one. What is, what did you say? What is love or uh, what is heaven? When you said, uh, you know, where we're, we realize we're one thing. Uh, all of us are that. God is How you started. Yeah. God, God, is God. God is what is God? Together. Yeah, God is all of us as one. And that's where they just found that oneness. You know, that they all wanted peace, right? They wanted peace. They chose love. They made a decision, right? Power of decision. They made a decision for truth, even if it was just that holy instant. And, um, you know, and it says the, the, the bosses came in, were absolutely shocked and angered, you know, and they said, no, you know, this is, <laughs> you're not supposed to be, these aren't your friends that you're supposed to be killing them. Um, Gosh, and they say that more young men were uh, lost in that particular war, a uh, huge amount of generation of young men. Um, thank God we're not bodies. Um, no, there's a movie about that. Is there a movie about it? Passing Bell. Yes. The Passing, the passing bell. bell? Bells. 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 Passing the Passing bells. bells. If anyone wants to watch a beautiful movie about that, it's called The Passing Bells. Thank you for that, Sue. So, um, yes, it's our choice, isn't it? Every moment to choose peace or choose fear. Choose uh, one isn't real, though, so don't worry about too much about it. <laughs> Just let it pass and don't get guilty. Um, yes, to this, uh, today's lesson, the title, 
the whole lesson is beautiful. And also the word for the day uh, in the, uh, un the unity word is flow. And uh, got excited about that idea today, you know, flow, make a decision at the beginning of the day for God, for peace, for love, for unity, uh, for namaste, <laughs> and uh, flow with that. Just flow with that all day. You have the power of decision. It's not hard. Um, today, at the beginning of A Course in Miracles lesson today, just the title, there is no end to all the peace and joy, right? Isn't that, it's always the season really, but maybe we're more aware of it in this time of year. There's no end to the peace and joy and all the miracles, right? The shifts in perception that we can give when we accept God's word, why not today, right? It's, that's in the title, why not today? It's a decision. You have the power of decision. Why should you wait for all the joy that's been promised you? Why wait? Why wait for heaven, right? Heaven is in you and you are, you are at home. <laughs> so I love you so much. Thank you all for sharing this holy instant with us, this holy moment in space-time. This is uh, such a gift to us all, really. Uh, just no accidents. So I'm very grateful to be here with you this holy season. And uh, yeah, just expand in love together. So thank you, beloved Vicki. I believe she made it. She was traveling and having a little difficulty. Are you here, my love? I'm right here, Dala. Yeah. I'm right here, in and out, but I'm here. So hi, everybody. Hi, everybody at Namaste and on Zoom and Gather Radio, Lynn and Dove. Thank you all for being here. And first, I want to invite you to consider in the morning, we saw that Scott is singing with you guys in the morning before you turn on the Zoom. And if you would open up our mic, we'd love to join you, many of us. Um, we'd love to hear or join you, or maybe you, you could have him continue and sing with us a little bit to start off. So that was just a request and a suggestion that some of us were feeling. Absolutely. And then, we'll, have to, we'll have to get Scott to take his robe off and, and then okay. uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll put his holy robe on instead. <laughs> yeah, because it looked like so much fun. We want to play too. So, but that's okay, because we watched the joy and we were in the inner rhythms that were happening. But um, then the other thing, one of the very clearest messages I've ever received, um, I asked for help over something, I don't know what I was doing, but I, I can't remember that, but I remember the answer. And this was the answer. And it was simply live in the answer. That's it, live in it. And of course, love is the answer. The Holy Spirit's help is always right here. That's the answer. So I kept saying, well, what exactly is the answer? Where is this answer? <laughs> I'm, if I'm befuddled, where is the answer? Live in the love. Live in the answer. And the way you were describing when you teach at schools, and I've done a little of that. A lot of us have. There's a natural living in the answer when you're a teacher. Because you're giving, you're giving to all those children or adults or whoever it is that comes before you, you're giving of whatever it is you hold in your heart and your mind. But it's it, teaching is a sacred ministry, just like uh, the healing profession, doctors, they have, or anyone in the health professionals, they have answered a call to help. And that's the form it takes, that their help takes. A teacher at any level is answered a sacred call to give of what they have and what they know. And we are answering a call to give of what we know wherever we are, whatever we're doing. If we're flipping pancakes in a in a in a um, in a in a greasy spoon somewhere, whatever we are doing, we have the opportunity to freely give the love that we are. And you know, we don't just benefit, we all benefit. Consciousness is raising. The return to our, our Christ mind, our divinity, is a collective experience. And even just in our lifetime, we have seen 
giant steps go from gurus and leaders and saints and holy people here and there to the collective awareness that we are this divinity, that it isn't reserved for a few special people that seem to have special abilities, but that it's something that is available to everyone. A while ago, I told you in our Catholic church, um, right in my town in Quincy, they have something called the joy movement. And it's not a whole thing under the Roman rule. It's something that this particular set of brothers came to. They wanted their church to be founded and grounded in God's love and us as children of God to be identified as the innocent, happy, beautiful, celebrating children of God. So they've decided to make the whole church into a joy movement. And they have, and they've done it successfully. Can you still hear me? I know I'm, I, I've lost everybody's picture. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, if I'm still here. Can, can you guys hear me on Zoom? Yeah? Oh, hey, thank you, Carol. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, you can hear me, Dalla. Okay. So what I'm, uh, what, and I've always held that message, live in the answer. Live in the answer. When I'm particularly perplexed about anything, I remember, okay, I don't have to figure it out. I am God's child, just like the workbook lesson says today. Why don't we accept that today? Why not today? And nothing but that. See, in accepting the truth, there's no room to accept what's not true. It's not a matter of good or bad or this or that. It's a matter of true or false. And love is true. And nothing less than love is true. That's why we can live in joy without opposite. It isn't a possibility. It's a mandate. We are called to live in joy without opposite because it is true that God is our father and God can be in charge. We can choose his will, which is always happiness, if we stop trying to make it up ourselves. It's that simple. And there's no compromise in it. And there doesn't have to be in our lives. And when I'm perplexed, I just show up wherever I am. If it's in my building, I go down to the office and I say hello to someone or I'll go into whatever's a common area and smile at someone or go to a coffee machine and pour somebody else a cup of coffee, go to a door and open it for someone. The very act of giving in whatever form we find ourselves and it doesn't need to be special, activates the love and the natural gift of love that is our very being. Not that we want to love and that we think of love. We are love. And when we integrate it, when we're in time, I find it as a body, it's particularly helpful to act on it, to put it into some form of expression. And it could be call a friend and tell them you love them or listen to them or just be with them. It doesn't have to be overtly loving. This is so practical. And it's coming into our awareness in every which way now, because collectively we are coming into this time of divinity or the time of love. Yesterday I said it was an era of love, an era of innocence of the heart. And, and it's in everything. And it's up to each one of us. And there's no small measure of love. Love is always optimal. It's not like you give a little love. Love itself is the beam of creation, the beam of, of our creator and our oneness with him. And it's full on. And when we experience it as welcoming it and full on as who we are to wherever we find ourselves, I'm here at a Howard Johnson's motor lodge. <laughs> and I'm blessing these cars that are driving behind me or in front of me, because that's where I find myself, where I find myself with you guys. It's really simple. And let it be simple. Live in the answer. And the answer is simply love. And the expression of it is wherever we find ourselves, as we are, be ourselves. That's why be yourself, be the love that we are. That's saying yes to God. That's saying I am as God created me and I accept it. That's it. Simple as that. Okay, you guys, I love you. I see it's 1030 and blessings, everybody. Happy Christmas week. Every day is Christmas, every day. And this year, more than ever in the whole collective, in the whole world of time and space, we're living in a time of giving and loving and celebrating. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Vicki. That's beautiful to hear about living Thanks. in
answer is just perfect. So thanks so much. And, and it's true. Merry Christmas to you and everyone listening today. Thank you. We're living in a time of giving. Thanks for that. Absolutely. Uh, yes, so we are going to sing together Silent Night, including you on Zoom, in remembrance of those soldiers. Uh, I like the thought that um, they chose... Um, they didn't choose the Kaiser in that moment. They didn't choose the British leader, the king. They chose the Prince of Peace, right? <laughs> That's what they consciously chose in that moment was the Prince of Peace. And so we'll recognize the Prince of Peace in this moment and sing Silent Night together. Do you, um, do you have handy the keys that we wrote down? Oh, G. We did this in G. We did right? this in G. Huh? <laughs> okay, I'll Everybody be right behind right? you. Here we are. Hello. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Eight. Holy night. All is calm. All is bright. Down young virgin. Love you all. Thank you, our Zoom family. Love to everyone. Remember the truth today. Be joyful. Oh